very fancy water sample collecting device. <laughs> Our trusty uh, Home Depot bucket with a rope attached to it. So what you're going to do is, because there's some liquid in here, we don't really know what it is. We've got to rinse it out, right? So you want to rinse the bucket three times and you don't have to fill it. You can just, you know, let it dip in the water, slash it around, do that three times. And then you're going to fill the bucket right over here off the side uh, to be about half full. And that's more than enough water for what we're going to need. Once you get that up on land, you will, and somebody can help with this as well. Only one person is going to get assigned to this, but somebody can help with the pouring. You're going to fill this water bottle. Uh, so you don't want to dip your hand in the bucket because who knows what's on your hand, right? <laughs> and now that's on your sample. So we don't want to measure that stuff. So what you're going to do is you'll have your sample bottle open, have a helper help you pour the, the water into your bottle. And same thing, a three time rinse. We don't know what that is. <laughs> I mean, actually we do, it's just water, but, <laughs> but you'll just pour a little bit of water in there. Um, and then you can just hold the cap on there, shake it a little bit pour it out, do that three times, and then fill it with your sample water. And then this bottle will get brought over to the table where we're gonna have our chemical analyses taking place. Okay? So that's pretty easy breezy, right? So next up, so this is a very important job. We have the data recorder. Oh, boom, all right. <laughs> so what you, what's your gonna tell me? Marissa. So whenever you collect something, let Marissa know because she has a checklist of everything to be collected. So she's gonna check it off. And then if you have a data point, you wanna let her know, like the Seki disc, you wanna let her know the depth of that Seki disc. So she'll write down all the data points. We have one data sheet. will also be in charge of doing the Seki disc. Has anybody ever seen these before? Any ideas on what this would measure? Nope. Turbidity. Boom, boom, boom. Yes. Does anybody want to remember what turbidity is? Yeah. Yeah. So turbidity is a measure of the visibility in the water. So turbidity itself is actually the part of the, the particles that are in the water. It could be sediment, it could be cells, it could be debris, right? And so the turbidity changes depending on um, um, how clear or how murky your water is, right? So with this, so this is a Secchi disc, it's spelled S-E-C-C-H-I, and it's named after the person that invented it. So you lower this into the water, and at the point where you can't see this disc, that's going to be the measure. That's going to be the depth you want to measure. And so, what you're going to be measuring is how far into the water column this disc is. So you're going to keep an eye on the cord, and wherever the water line hits, that's your reading. So each of these black dots is 0.25 meters. I'm sorry. Each of the black dots is 0.5 meters, <laughs> and then the red dot is one full meter. Does 
anybody remember how many feet are in a meter? It's like three and a half. Like three and a half? Yeah, it's like 3.3. But if you kind of guesstimate three and a half, you're pretty close. That's a quick conversion. So about 3.3 about uh, feet. So with this, we're only going to go down to like 0.25 for the resolution there. So if it's, you know, the water, the water line's hitting here, you can say 0.25 meters. We're not going to get super precise on that. Right. And so we're going to have one sheet where all of the data, I love watching this turn around, <laughs> where all the data is recorded for the whole section. So that will be a job that we'll assign coming up. But you'll want to make sure to tell the data recorder what your measurement is on the second case. Okay? Next up, what in the world do you think we use this for? Collecting phytoplankton. Yes. So this is a net that has an 80 micron mesh. So the water will come, will come through, but we keep all the critters that we want to collect inside. So we're going to keep anything bigger than 80 microns. And we do keep a lot of things smaller than that as well. But that's kind of the threshold for this. So what we want to do is we're going to get this into the water and we're going to pull it through the water uh, to collect phytoplankton. We're going to do our toes for about five minutes. Um, and so you're going to make sure that the whole rim is underwater as you pull it through. Because if it's in the air, there's no phytoplankton. Well, there might be some, but the phytoplankton aren't going to be in the air, right? So you want to make sure to keep that under the water. And an easy way to help with that is to make sure your bottle here is full of water. I know that kind of is a keeper. So this actually detaches. Um, so we want to make sure before you put it in the water, this one doesn't thread perfectly, so don't frustrate yourself trying to make it fit perfectly. <laughs> it fits enough. <laughs> so this one you can kind of just make sure it's tight. To fill that up with water, because we're doing it with a net, right? It's kind of difficult. So you're going to dip the net into the water, just below the water line, and kind of pull it up and put it under, pull it up. And every time there's going to be a little bit of water that gets collected in the bottle. So you'll do that a couple of different times until the bottle is full. And then that will help act as an anchor to keep your net down below the surface. Uh, there's a little handle on the edge, on the end of the line. If you can just wrap that around your wrist, there's a little safety. And the net won't fall in without you. <laughs> You're going into it. No, I'm just kidding. Hopefully, no, nobody's gone swimming yet. So let's, let's, let's keep that record going. <laughs> so who would like to do the phytoplankton? All right. Oh, she beat you to it. We've got another net coming up here. You can jump on that. So you're going to be putting your phytoplankton toe into this little sample bottle. You can fill it up to like right here. And I'll help you at the end concentrate it. Um, but you'll want to make sure to put a label on it at the end. With, we have some tape up here. Thank you. Some orange tape up here. You're going to want to make, make sure to label it phyto. And then you guys are section 403, group B. And then we're going to look at these samples next week in lab. All right, so now what's different about this guy? Bigger. bigger. <laughs> it's bigger in length. It has a bigger diameter opening for the net. And the mesh size is different as well. So that one was about 80 microns. This one's 150 microns. So now we're going to hopefully let most of the small stuff go through it and we're going to try to catch the bigger stuff in here. So we're going to be targeting the zooplankton um, and the zooplankton that you eat the phytoplankton. So they're a little bit bigger. Um, they actively swim. So this net has a little bit bigger opening. So hopefully we catch them. They can't swim that fast, right? <laughs> and if you're sampling out on like the open ocean or you're towing one of these behind a boat, you may have one of these nets that is several meters in diameter. Uh, so they get much, much, much larger. So with this, we have a longer net, we have a, a bigger mesh size, and then this end is also different. So this end where you collect the sample is actually called the cod end, and this unscrews, 
and comes off. And the mesh on here is only 50 microns. So now you have your sample down here. You can use it as like a little sieve, right? So we'll have, this is just uh, DI water, just filtered deionized water. And you can use this to spray inside to help get all the little critters off the inside of the cotton and then pour that into your sample. Not just on the ground, but the one. <laughs> and you can also use this to squirt water on the outside of that mesh to help knock things off into the container, into the cot end, and then pour that into your sample as well. Not like that. <laughs> this is weighted, so it is very heavy. Um, and again, like I said, this is net meshing here. Uh, so you don't want to grab it there because your finger will go right through it. So make sure that when you're gripping it, you're gripping the hard PVC side. One more quick little tip about this. When you're threading this on, it is just PVC. So if you thread it improperly, you can force it, but it'll break it or strip it. We don't want to do that. So just make sure that you're doing that, lining it up. Um, it's kind of tricky. Make sure you're lining up straight. It should twist on really easy with very little effort. If you're having to put in any more effort than that, then it's threaded wrong, so just undo it. All right, and then one more thing about this is different. So inside this net, we have this little torpedo looking thing. What in the world do you think this is for? What's that, for current? Yeah, kind of, a little bit of both. So this is called a flow meter, and this is going to help us calculate the volume of water that goes through the net. So we're still gonna do a tow for about five minutes, but by looking at the, it's kind of like an odometer, uh, where you can track kind of the, the number of turns by this little propeller. And you can use that and the diameter of the net to convert to volume. Uh, you'll want to tell the data recorder the initial starting number, and you're going to look through this little narrow window uh, for the numbers. And then you'll want to tell the data recorder the final number as well. So we can use that to calculate the volume, and then I'll give you guys that information. And so it's kind of acting like a sieve. So like if you're straining pasta, mm -hmm. right? So this is like your, your um, colander. <laughs> so all the good stuff is still in there. And now what I want you to do, I'm gonna rub some of this off the net. So you'll dip the net into the water to about here. And just kind of dip it down and pull it up. And you're gonna see the water in that bottle become a different color, like more brown. And that's a good sign. That means that we're concentrating those cells more. So you can do one more little dip like that and we'll be good. Perfect. Great. And now we're going to put that in your sample bottle. So I can hold the bottle for you if you want to do the fun part. <laughs> and we're going to fill it to about right here. So like seven minutes. You got it. Pause there and then give us a little swirl so we get some more of that good stuff and then just top it up a little bit. So if you look in the look in the in the into the container, you can see those little brown specks. Mm -hmm. So that's all phytoplankton. Well, not all. Some of it might be detritus, but a lot of it is the good stuff we're going for. Do you want to get in there?
一軒。<笑>
can't, you can't play. <laughs> it kind of sounds like a reflex. It yeah, so it looks at like oh. the bending of light, uh, but it measures salinity. So we'll use this to measure salinity. So what you want to do is to use the DI water or fresh water that doesn't have salinity, it has zero salinity, and you're going to squirt a few drops on here on that blue rectangle space. You're going to gently lower that little cover. You're going to look through the eyepiece here and you're going to see a round field of view as if you were looking in a microscope. And there's going to be the top half is blue, the bottom half is white, and where they meet, that's where you're going to get your salinity reading. And you're going to use the numbers on the right hand side that are in parts per thousand or PPT, which is the same unit as PSU for practice. Okay? So you're going to take the reading first of fresh water, make sure that the the blue and white lines meet up at the zero mark. If they don't, come get UMA or I and we'll help you calibrate it. If it's at zero, you're good to go for your sample. So what you'll do is you'll have your sample bottle that Taylor would have collected and put on the table. You'll use this little bitty pipetter to get a little bit of the sample out. Wipe off your fresh water with the Kim wipe. Not your shirt. <laughs> and then you're going to put your drops of salt water on there. Close the lid, look through here, and it'll tell you your salinity you'll report that to Marissa, okay? So there's that part. And then there is also this ammonia kit. And this, so I'm not gonna go through all the steps. It's all written out really nicely in the protocol, but there are several reagents in here. So this one has two different reagents labeled first and second. There's also a color wheel in here that you're gonna be using. And you're gonna use this color to match up to your sample to figure out the amount of ammonia in your sample. The color wheel will actually get placed into this black box. It opens up. There's a little, little pointer here that the, the color wheel sits on. And there's two holes at the top where your test tubes go. This will all make sense when you start reading in the protocol. <laughs> I'm just kind of highlighting some key points. And then you have these two test tubes that you're using for your ammonia kit and the two blue stoppers for the test tubes, okay? And all the steps are laid out in the, in the protocol. All right, next up, we have the dissolved oxygen kit. So who are the last two people remaining? Um, oh, okay, we're short one. Yeah. So Taylor, would you mind helping with this? Because your job will be done by the time this no, comes around. All right, thank you so much. Um, so this is the dissolved oxygen kit. There's a few more steps involved with this kit. Um, there are three reagents in this kit. One, two, three, right? Handy dandy. Uh, we have the little glass bottle with a stopper and you just kind of twist that gently to get it out and to lock it. There's also a test tube. It's gonna to refer to a test tube and a little square glass bottle. This will all make sense when you read through the protocol. <laughs> And this is your th sodium thiol sulfate. You're going to be using this towards the end to put a couple drops into the square bottle. I'm going to tell you this, a little spoiler alert. It's probably going to take between 8 to 12 drops. So you're going to have to count those drops out loud, add them slowly. So that'll make sense when you get to that point. <laughs> and then there's also little clippers in here that you can use to open these little pouches. They have not been used on toenails. Okay, Only in the kits. <laughs> those look familiar. <laughs> awesome. So those are the components of the oxygen kit. And again, all the steps are laid out in the protocol. So we'll go through that. Um, in addition to the oxygen kit, this group will be in charge of doing these little nutrient strips. So this one is going to measure nitrate and nitrite. This one measures phosphate. And so this is a really quick, simple, easy way Probably not high resolution, right? But it's a kind of a quick estimate of the amount of nutrients in the water. And so the nitrate and nitrite st um, uh, strips have two little pads. You see those two little pads at the top? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna dump that into the water sample and then you're gonna wait 30 seconds and you'll match it up to see what color it most closely resembles on the bottle. And then you'll report those numbers to Marissa. And then it's the same thing with the phosphate, but there's only one little pad on there. One little sensor for the phosphate, okay? All right, so you can just dip it all the way in there. And then you're gonna hold it with the little pads up, yeah? I think it's 30 seconds, it needs to wait. Yeah. This one's 30 seconds, the other one's 45.
And then here we can already see. There you go. <laughs> like, here we go. <laughs> and I bet the first one's ready to read now. Okay, so then you can hold up the strips and see what color it closely resembles. I think it's the it's like zero. zero. Huh? And then the phosphate. Ooh, that one has more of a color reaction. Yeah, I think it's a five. five. So you guys a little wrench in here that I didn't put in the protocol. We're gonna dilute our samples okay. because the reading is so low okay. that we don't we can't get it. Yeah, so we're gonna dilute the sample and then we'll take your measurement or your the um, and result calendar. So what you'll do is just fill the sample to like this line right here. Okay. And then fill the rest of it up with the water. Okay. But one of them you're not gonna add any reagents to. Okay. So we add the water to here? No, no, no. Yes. Yep, brightened it up all right. No, if you meant if you meant third one. Wine? Yeah. The oxygen one, we don't want to introduce any bubbles, but the ammonia, you can shake it vigorously and it's not even worry about bubbles getting in there. Yes. Now it says we need to... What's that? I know. I know. Somebody said look like apple juice. I can see that. It turns 16. You'll see the substance turn yellow and color. Wow. We're changing oh, yeah. colors. Okay. Yeah, we'll toss it off. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Can you flip that off? <laughs> Do you need help? It's going to splash you a little bit. I know. Guys, look at the technique. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. So I got 20. Okay. 20. You need a confirmation? My calculations are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like... It's like 21. Okay. It's like right at the like 2021. Yep. The clippers. Here it goes. Let it sit in here because I kind of get nervous. Am I supposed to start the time of Sure. I think that one's for three minutes because it's mixing. That should be good as long as it's dissolved. And then whatever's on the top, you just pour it into the bottle. You have to invert it so it works. Yeah. Try to catch as much as you can. No, you're good. You're good. It's okay. I'll rinse it off. All right. Good. And now try yep. it. Now you're gonna be good. And now you're gonna hold it with a finger on top, and you're gonna invert it a couple times. You have to wait. There we go. I just try to catch a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going until you see a brown white. And you're changing things. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm trying to make your job a little easier. Yeah, you're perfect. No. <laughs> you. Yeah, one of them you're not gonna add anything. Open it. You have to add the same amount of thiosulfate as there is oxygen, and that's why you can do the conversion. Add in What? Yeah, the same one, right? Right. Yeah, see, because that was a lot for the second tube. Oh, the reactor. Then do I put the stopper back on? Yeah. The stopper back on. Timer. Oh, good. No, we're It's like an amber color. And I'll start the timer. Yeah, so I need to do some research on the chemistry behind this. But if you're curious, you can look up the brand is hot. Can you pour over the waste bottle? I love it. What a scientist. She doesn't. Just give her her degree already. And then that's beautiful. This is the true test. We didn't tell you in the beginning. Thank you. <laughs> and as soon as you're going to start seeing the yellow solution go more yeah. clear, and so you want to kind of go slowly, and then as soon as it goes all the way clear, then that's your final count. So I would count out loud. One. One. Two. Three. Four. <laughs> Are you gonna get on the boat again anytime soon? No. Oh, man. Right? Oh, man. Sorry. 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 Sorry.
Thanks for asking for me. <laughs> what happened to working on it every day? That was our that was our food trip for the semester. Yeah. I'm sorry. Seven. Well, I did find out that you can reserve your own vessel. It? For anybody like for anybody that's. Uh, it's called the Thompson. Yeah. It was, yeah. Well, I mean, it's pretty clear. Uh, that's kind of. I was well, gonna say, it looks clear to me. Yeah. Well, they said for Yeah, we can do nine. Okay. Nine.